This week we're taking a look at Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, and a little trailer debuted that you might have seen. What trailer? You know, the one. This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Show, the only Star Wars show on the internet that would like to formally take a moment of silence for our comments section. Yes, for years, regardless of the video they were watching, dedicated viewers would always ask one simple question. When is the trailer? Release the trailer! Only here for the trailer. Well, now with the final trailer for the Skywalker Saga released, we hang our heads in silence and mourn our favorite type of comment. And now the news. On Monday night, fans who tuned in to watch football, and me, were treated to the final trailer for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. The trailer had tons going on. We're talking Rey training in the jungle. Wet sad boy Kylo facing off against Rey in the water. A floating glacier base. An armada of resistance ships, including ships that may or may not be the Ghost and the Colossus. Ah, Kylo and Rey are in the Emperor's throne room one moment, and then the next they're destroying Kylo's Darth Vader shrine. Uh, Rey looking up at an ominous cloaked figure. 3PO taking one last look at his friends. Uh. Space horses on top of what looks like a Star Destroyer. That is a complicated ride. Emperor and Luke voiceover. Carrie saying always. Oh, I clap. It was very good. It was very good. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker will be released in theaters on December 20th with advance tickets being available right now. For more details, check out StarWars.com slash SWS. And speaking of The Rise of Skywalker, Star Tours The Adventure Continues is receiving a special Rise of Skywalker update on December 20th. The update will feature characters and locations from the film. For more on The Rise of Skywalker update coming to Star Tours, including the parks it will appear at, check out StarWars.com slash SWS. Hey, if you've ever wanted to build your own droid, now is your chance. First, and Force for Change are launching the Build My Droid contest where fans are invited to design the droid of their dreams and enter for a chance to see it come to life in a future Star Wars story. Contestants must submit a design of their droid in the form of a sketch, drawing, or painting between now and November 13th. For a complete set of rules and more information, check out StarWars.com slash BuildMyDroidContest. It's Wednesday, and it's an episode of the Star Wars show, which means we got some book news, y'all. StarWars.com has just revealed new images from Dark Horse's Art of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. The images include concept art of Cal Kestis climbing through wooded terrain near two stormtroopers, as well as an early look at the exploration of the origin tree. For more on these images, including an interview with the artist, check out StarWars.com slash SWS. Finally, since we're talking about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, I was actually able to play the game for about three hours last week and talk to some of the developers. And I got to go to work! <laughs> yup! Here's a look at my preview of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'm in Anaheim, California at a special Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order preview event and I am very excited because I'm gonna get some hands-on time with the game and I'm gonna get to talk to the team to find out what makes this game so special. Let's jump in. Today we've been talking about this thing for months and it was wonderful to sit down and really see how it all came together. It all comes together so well. That's great to hear. That's great. <laughs> and there's so much more too. I loved the levels that I played through. Everything looked like Star Wars, but I did love that there is some of that traversal and combat in there and it felt natural within the realm of Star Wars. At Respawn, we're gameplay first, even though we've got the Star Wars narrative driven aspect too. So we start with wanting to make it feel really good on the sticks. We want traversal to feel engaging. We want there to be a challenge in there too while also it being very accessible. And then our planets are also kind of designed around different gameplay themes. So we try to make them each feel unique and feel very Star Wars, but have a different gameplay feeling for each level. And these planets and locations need to like make you feel you're in a Star Wars place. About half of our locations are also new locations. So we're trying to introduce new places to the galaxy and they serve up gameplay goals. They unlock progression throughout the game and there's story happening at the same time. So each one kind of has its own theme and focus focus as you go through the game. How did you kind of work in terms of gameplay and in story together to tell a story of a time that we're not so familiar with? We definitely wanted to make sure that we gave you the experience of really becoming a Jedi. Cal was a Padawan before Order 66, so he wasn't like a fully developed Jedi with all the powers. You're actually in a post-Order 66 world, learning those powers and learning how to become your true self and reclaim your identity of a Jedi that was sort of lost to you in that time. And we do that through gameplay in ways that I can't quite spoil 
but they're quite tied together. Cal being distant from the Force and relearning his Force powers and reconnecting to the Force was really a perfect setup for us. So he's been through a lot, but that really narratively fit right through our gameplay and our combat system. One of the things that I really enjoyed about Jedi Fallen Order as I was playing the demo is the combat. It really has its own flavor. It feels like Respawn. It feels like Star Wars. It's all about making the game feel good. When you press the button, it's got to be responsive, got to be satisfying, and combine that with being a Jedi and using Force powers in your lightsaber. We knew that's something at the very beginning we wanted to get right. There's the skill tree, which is more combat focused, which is divided into survival, lightsabers, and Force powers, but each one of those promotes a different play style, and you could take an encounter in different ways, which kind of ties into environment and exploration again. We'll throw curveballs at the player. Maybe there's a new combat encounter. Maybe there's a new route to take because you have a new ability. Maybe you can get through a way faster because you unlocked shortcuts earlier. So we really want to keep it fresh for the player. So your second time on Zepho might be a little different than the first time. Star Wars has this certain spirit and it has this certain heart and soul. And I think we've discovered that somehow. And I don't know the exact formula how we did it, but I'm happy that we've arrived there and to hear it from people with fresh eyes. Hi, second sister, Anthony Carboni, serious journalist. Don't look at me like that. Oh, okay. I see. I see. The Empire once again fears a free press. I'll get my answers. Oh my god, oh my god. Love that Lucasfilm logo. Talking about the force. Ray running again. <laughs> oh, I love that. We're not alone. Ah! The people will fight if we leave them. There's the Corvette. Oh, oh man. Oh, no one does. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Milo! Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. And now you're coming oh. together. <laughs> Get him. Is your undoing. Oh, that's cool. What uh what are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir. What? At my friends. Oh the main theme! Confronting fear is the destiny of a child. Oh, I'm freaking out. Oh my god! Your destiny. <laughs> I'm crying! Whoa! Is that the Vader mask? going to end me. It is going to destroy me. <laughs> oh my god. You're watching the Star Wars show. That was a show and a half. I know, right? It's almost as if we've been working on things for months, holding on to all the content until the end of the year, and then slowly releasing it into the wild. Consider the Star Wars show Firehose of Content officially on. Official Firehose graphic, go! It's okay if we don't have one, it's fine. <laughs> We've been working on a lot of stuff. Speaking of content, last week we wanted to see your spooky Star Wars costumes from the past and Wowza, there is some spooky vintage stuff out there. Dave McHugh showed off his old school Tusken Raider costume, or God Mommy as we like to call them around here. Neil Cesariega hype. Also huge props for the Burger King trick or treat bag. Rachel showed off her sister's homemade ATSD costume. Michael Hyken showed off a trio of Ben Cooper costumes. And Joey Rosales showed off a couple of his homemade costumes from his childhood. Very well done, Joey. However, the clear winner was Dave McHugh. Again, delivering not once, but twice this week with Queen Amidala and a blue screen costume and a bonus George Lucas. Every George Lucas is a bonus George <laughs> Lucas. He could pop up anywhere. Thank you to everybody who submitted this week. And as always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.
I like a costume. There has to be a picture of the character <laughs> on the costume. Has to say it. That's a great costume, kid. Good well job. done. You should George Lucas for Halloween. Just spray it all white. You mean just stop spraying it brown? <laughs> <laughs>